Hello and welcome to ACCA F6 Taxation. This lecture is relevant for the UK taxation paper. So if you have chosen any other version of F6, you will have to find the lectures somewhere else. AccountancyTube.com provides the lecture of UK version taxation. Now, the relationship of this exam to other exams which you have already passed. Uh, I assume that if you have chosen this paper, you might have, uh, you might well have passed some of the uh, exams of this level as well, say F5 or F7 or F9, and you will have passed, uh, you might well have passed knowledge level exams F1, F2, and F3. You might have uh, come through FIA qualification, Foundation in Accountancy. At Foundation Accountancy, you might have studied taxation at basic level, so. I mean, whichever way you came to this level, you will have an idea about taxation to some extent. Now, you could also be exempt from other ACC exams, and this could be your first exam at ACCA. In that case, as well, you don't have to worry, because at this taxation level and at uh, Accountancy 2, we provide the lecture from the scratch. Even if you take advanced taxation, for example, I will take the lectures from the scratch assuming that you do not have any knowledge of taxation. So you don't have to worry about it. How to take full benefit of this lecture? You will have to download free lecture notes on our website, uh, which are available on, on our website, uh, accountancytube.com. Lectures are absolutely free, as well as uh, notes are free. However, uh, with the help of lectures and notes, you will also need something else called Practice and Revision Kit. Uh, now, Practice and Revision Kit, i.e., Unfortunately, uh, we do not provide it for free. You will have to buy it in the market or you can buy it online. But please remind yourself, please remember that uh, do not buy it from anyone. Just buy it from approved learning providers. There are quite many in the market, say, Get Through Guides, BPP or Kaplan. I would recommend you buy from BPP. I'm not representing anyone, but uh, that's, uh, you know, it's one of the uh, good exam kits which I have seen. As far as the past papers are concerned of taxation, please remember that do not look at the past papers of ACCA taxation exam, which are F6 or P6. The reason being because taxation is a subject which is constantly changing by government because of the changes in the legislation, because of the changes in the economic environment. So change, change in the tax rates, for example, changing in the relief, changes in the exemptions as well. So these all things are keep changing by the government. So we have to cope with that as well. Say for example, you go to ACC website and they pick an exam paper of June 2010. Uh, it will be exactly how it was at that time. Now if you download that paper and start solving it with the rules which I tell you here, then you will uh, confuse yourself because uh, for example, personal allowance is something which you don't know now, but say for example, it is a thing the, which uh, is now in this tax year is 10,600. But if you take to take that exam of 2010, it might be 6,000 something. So that's why I'm saying that rules are changed, uh, exemptions are changed, and tax rates as well. So that's why please do not look at the past papers from ACC website, especially for taxation. As far as other exams are concerned, for example, F5 or F7 or F9, there might be some changes because uh, with the passage of time, ACC sometimes exclude uh, some topics from their syllabus and sometimes include some extra topics. But still, you can look at the past papers because there is no such complications of taxation rules and exemptions and all that. So especially for tax exams, F6 and P6, you should not look at the past papers. That's why uh, exam kits are made because they have uh, picked the exactly uh, exact past papers, but they have changed the rules. They've changed the exemptions in them. They've changed the reliefs and rates as well. So that's why, although they are exact past papers, but they have just updated it to the current Finance Act. Now this Finance Act, which you are just watching the lectures, this is Finance Act 2015. I will take you all the, uh, I will uh, give it, uh, deliver all the lectures of Finance Act 2015. So this lecture is only relevant to you if you are planning to appear for exam in 
March 2017. But if you are planning to appear for exam in say June 2017 or later exams, then you will have to come to our website later to find the latest lecture. We continuously uh, update our lectures on our website, so you have to keep our website visiting in order to get the full benefit of updated version of the lectures. For now, let's start the PC, uh, F6, sorry. So F6 exam is a taxation exam. You might have studied taxation before at uh, F1 exam, accountant in business, or FAB if you came through the uh, FIA level, or you might well have a special taxation exam as well in FIA if you remember. So you might have a little idea of taxation. You might have studied at F3 as well, a little bit of that. So we will see here in details. So I, what I mean to say is you have little idea of taxation. Now, if you, even if you have uh, if you are exempt from earlier ACC exams, you might have studied taxation in your other qualifications on the basis of which you have got exemptions. So, I mean, I don't expect you to be master at this taxation, but I expect you to know what tax is. I think that you know it. But don't worry, even if you don't know it, I will take you from the scratch. Now, before I move to the topics which are part of F6 exam, let me tell you the importance of this exam. This exam, taxation, F6 exam, this is the only compulsory exam of taxation in whole ACCA curriculum. So I think that you would appreciate the fact that why is it only taxation exam? Examiner could have given you another exam as well. Remember that there is another exam as well, which is optional exam. So what I mean to say is that you could be an ACCA member and you could practice as a chartered accountant without passing P6 exam. You could choose any other optional exam, say advanced financial management. So that's why I am saying this exam paper is very, very crucial to the whole ACCA curriculum because it is the only uh, compulsory ACCA taxation exam. So that's why uh, examiner expect you to be competent enough to be a fully qualified accountant. So that's why examiner will examine and will, uh, uh, will expect you to learn each and every bit which is needed to be a fully professional qualified accountant. So all the topics in this area, if especially, now there, are two, there could be two people. So if you are planning to go for P6 as well, if you love the taxation, then you will choose taxation in advanced level as well, in optional level, which is P6. If you hate taxation, then this is the only exam you have to pass in order to qualify as a chartered accountant. However, whichever uh, group you relate to, whether you hate tax or you love tax, you, you have to pass this taxation anyway. Another thing, important thing actually is, uh, this is, as you know, a UK version of taxation. Uh, some of you might be from outside the UK. If you are from the UK, if you are resident in the UK, then you will find this exam a little bit easier. Please remember that a little bit, not much, but you will find this paper a little bit easier because you are dealing with the taxation in a daily basis. You already know what that is because you pay it when you uh, fill your car with the fuel. You know what NI is, National Insurance Contribution is, because you have seen it on your payslip or someone else's payslip. So if you are not from the UK, then you might find these things a little bit confusing because you haven't heard these things before. But don't worry, even if you are from the UK or outside the UK, then you don't have to worry about it because everything which I tell you here, I will tell you logic behind it. I will tell you each and every bit of everything. So you don't have to worry about it. Please remember that these lecture, lectures are important. But you also have to download the lecture notes from our website and see the lecture notes. In the late, later lectures, I will also tell you that please move to this page of uh, F6 lectures. So you will have to see on your lectures. There could be two reasons. You can watch the lectures, uh, so you can watch the notes online on your computer or mobile. Or you could take a photocopy or print it on your and have a hard copy of it. Whichever way you prefer, it's up to you. But please remember 
that you should care about the environment. Anyway, let's move to uh, ACCAF6. Now, in this uh, lecture, as you know that this is just an introduction, and overview, I will tell you the topics which are part of F6 exam. So, let's start with the first topic, which is part of ACCA F6 exam. First topic is income tax. Now, income tax is a tax which is paid on the income. Now, income could be earned from many sources. Say, for example, I am working for this company, say, AccountancyTube.com. I work for Accountancy Tube. They pay me a salary at the end of the month. And when I look at my pay slip, there is a gross salary. Then there are lots of deductions. And at the end of the uh, column, I get uh, net salary, net pay. That is the amount which is being paid at my, in my bank account. Although I'm earning much, but I'm getting less. The rest of the amount is going to the government, HMRC, which is the regulatory and collecting body of taxation on behalf of the government. Now, that is part of income tax because I'm earning some income from account institute and I'm being paid a salary and I have to pay tax on that. That is part of income tax. Say, for example, I am self-employed. If say some of you might be self-employed and have a business, you're earning some money from that business and you will have to pay tax on that as well. That is part of income tax. You could have many sources of income. Say, for example, you hold some shares in a company and you earn some money from the shares. You get some profit on shares. I hope that you know what is it called, the profit you earn from the shares. What is it called? Yeah, you're right, dividends. Now, the dividends are also source of income. So these are also part of income tax. You will be charged uh, tax on the dividends as well. Say, for example, uh, I'm pay being paid 3000 or 4000 a month from a company and uh, but my expenses are less than that so I get still get some disposable income so I thought uh, why shouldn't I put it in the bank to earn some interest so when I'm uh, earning some interest uh, I th I hope and I would uh, I think you would appreciate the fact that it is also income so interest income is also subject to income tax so there could be many many reasons you could have rental income if you have an extra property and you let it out to someone else and you are earning some uh, rent so there could be many many reasons so as i said income tax is simply the tax which you pay on the income you earn and income could be earned in many different ways second major topic is called uh, capital gains tax Now, the capital gains tax is a tax when you sell an asset and uh, you get gain on it. So, for example, if I had a house and I sold it for £100,000, which I bought it for £50,000, <laughs> excuse me, so I made a gain of £50,000, didn't I? So, I have to pay tax on that. That tax is called capital gains tax. I might have many, 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 many other assets as well. So, there could be exempt they could be chargeable to capital gains tax we will see it later when we move to this topic but for now capital gains tax is a simply a tax which is charged when you uh, make some gain on selling of some asset so as i give you the example of a house right now income tax uh, is personal tax type of personal tax there could be two types of taxes one is personal tax other is company tax so Income tax, as far as income tax is concerned, it is from personal perspective, from individual's perspective. Whereas this tax, capital gains tax, could be from personal perspective. It could also be from company's perspective. We will see it later. Right? So shall we move to the third topic then? Third topic is called corporation tax. I hope that you know what corporation is. Corporation is simply a company. So, say for example, you were doing a business and you were doing quite well, then you thought, why shouldn't I incorporate it and make it a company? Then when you made it as a company, then you were doing very well. Then you were earning some profit. But government thought, you know, government then, you know, uh, will have a share on that as well. That share is called corporation tax. So when you make a profit, and when you have a company and you make some profit out of that company, 
that company uh, that profit is also subject to a tax that tax is called corporation tax so it is simply a tax which the companies pay on their profit right another major topic is called inheritance tax inheritance tax is a tax which is paid on inheritance what is inheritance i think you know it when someone dies and their assets are transferred to their kids that is inheritance they are the kids are the owners kids are new owners of that property so uh, government is not that kind to give it for free so they must need something what do they need they need tax right so that tax which is charged on the inheritance which is transferred on death of someone uh, that tax is called inheritance say for example mr a dies and he had a property of say 1 million pounds and that property is transferred to their kids they will have to uh, they will have to pay some tax on that you could you might have to pay during lifetime as well but just for now just take it as a death tax so inheritance tax is a tax when someone dies and they might they will have to pay tax on their death right we will see in detail later the last major topic is called value added tax or VAT. VAT is a tax that is, for now, just take it as simple as it is that VAT is simply a tax which is paid when you buy something or when you sell something, you have to charge it. So when you go to, a, say, a pump, petrol pump, and then and you want to, to put some fuel in your car, and when you go to the counter to pay for the fuel, uh, you must check the receipt. You have paid some VAT on it on top of what you paid for the fuel. So that is called valued tax. You might have to pay VAT on the books. You could be exempt, but you might have to. We will see later when we move to that topic. But for now, VAT is simply a tax which you pay when you buy something or when you sell something. Businesses have to charge VAT. Business could be exempt, but business have to charge. Business could be exempt. We will see later all that in the uh, topic called VAT when we move to that topic. But for now, these are five major topics. There will be also uh, some other topics which, which I haven't listed in these. These are just the major topics. And please remember my words. These are topics, not the chapters. So this topic has got few chapters in it, say eight to ten, eight to ten chapters in it. Capital gains tax has got a couple of chapters. Corporation tax has got about eight chapters. Inheritance, a couple of chapters. VAT as well, a couple of chapters. So. Uh, these are not chapters, these are topics, right? Now this was uh, uh, syllabus and these were the topics which are part of ACCA F6. Now if you look at the exam itself, if we talk about the exam itself, uh, there are two options to you, there, there are two options available to you. One is a paper-based exam and other one is a uh, computer-based exam if you know it now uh, if you are competent and if you know and if you are familiar with the computer-based exams then you should go for CBE otherwise uh, it's useless to go for CBE because you won't get instant results anyway like you used to get at uh, knowledge level you will have to wait for your normal result date uh, even if you go for CBE at uh, this level skills level right so if you are uh, if you're confident and uh, uh, you know the techniques how to solve these papers uh, at computer based then you should go for it otherwise choose PBE because uh, uh, computer based exam at knowledge level were different than this level skills level at knowledge level say F1 and F2 and F3 uh, or FIA qualification uh, it was like uh, multiple choice questions true false or uh, fill in the blanks questions so it was simple as that but at this level although you will get some multiple choice questions but you will also get some uh, scenario based questions it will give you a scenario and then you will have to uh, you, you will have to solve that paper you solve that question now how you will solve that question in a quest in, in a computer you will have to watch the video which is available on ACC global website and uh, uh, until you are familiar with that technique you should not uh, choose it as computer based exam Paper-based exam is simply a paper based which you have to write it down. Right? So, exam, how the exam looks like. Now, the f there are three sections. 
in the exam first section has got 15 questions which are multiple choice questions and they have there are two marks each so total marks are 30 if you talk about the section 2 it has also got 15 questions and they are also two marks each hence these both look together doesn't it so what's the difference between these two why they have divided it into two sections yeah this section has got three scenarios right this section has got three scenarios and each scenario has got five questions in them so he will give you a scenario and he will say Mr. A was doing a business and he was earning this much money and he had a wife as well and then kids and blah 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 right then he will give you five questions at the end of the scenario and you will have to solve that questions with the help of that scenario then he will move to the uh, he will give you another scenario and he'll, he'll give you another five questions and like that so they will give you three scenarios and uh, each scenario will have five questions and each question has got two marks each right so that is the difference between section one and two and section three has got three questions and you have to solve obviously all of these and uh, in these three questions first question has got ten marks And question two and three have got 15 marks each. Right? So 30 marks in this section, 30 mark, uh, sorry, 40 marks in this section, 30 mark in this, 30 marks in this, altogether 100 marks. Right? So question one, 10 marks, question two and three, 30 marks, and likewise the other section as well. So this is the exam and how exam looks like. Right? So, in the next lecture, that is, uh, I think, end of the lecture, I think I haven't missed anything, I hopefully, even if I've missed, I will uh, take it in the next lecture. But uh, for now, uh, in the next lecture, we will see um, income tax and how the taxation works in the UK, right? So, uh, good luck to your exam, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.